pregnant in January of 2007. I found out on February 2nd, and there was absolutely no way I was telling my mom and dad but myself. So, um, I think it was at least two weeks that I knew, and that Preston and his mom knew before we told my parents, um, because I wanted to make sure that Preston and his mom were there when I told my parents. So, um, they came over one night to my mom's house, and mom had kind of heard around rumors, you know, Jade's pregnant, I had morning sickness at school, um, and she had asked me a couple times during those two weeks, Jade, are you pregnant? No, I'm not. You know, I was by myself, no way I was going to tell her. So, um, sat her down on the couch, and Preston and his mom were sitting next to me, and I said, Mom, you know that rumor that you heard that I was pregnant? Well, that's true. And the first thing she said was, call your dad. And that was the worst words I've ever heard. So I called my dad, and he had kind of heard too, and I think he knew when I called and told him, Dad, you need to come to Mom's house. Um, he knew when he walked in the front door what was going on. And he, he cried and yelled at me at the same time. And um, we sat there and talked for a while. Dad and my stepmom went home. Preston and his mom went home. Um, the plan at the time was we need to set up doctor's appointments, you know. We hadn't even thought about adoption. We were just taking it one day at a time. Um, so I started going to the doctor. Preston and I kind of started talking. And Preston's grandparents raised him till he was 13. And then his mom came back and decided, I'll take you now. Um, so Preston's first idea was, well, let's just let my grandparents raise her. And I wasn't, I didn't want that to happen. So then the second idea was, well, my dad and stepmom can adopt her. And I wasn't really okay with that either. Um, I wanted to keep her, and I wanted to stay at my mom's house and take care of her, and I wanted Preston to get a job, and that's how it was going to work. Well. Preston brought up the idea of adoption, open adoption, and I told him no, I didn't want to do it. And we fought about it for about three weeks, and I talked to my parents a little bit and decided that maybe it was the best idea. So I made Preston call Amy, and we met with Amy, she has profiles, um, she has five profiles. And I took them home and looked at them first and picked Sarah and Adam. And I took them to school the next day and gave them to him. And he brought them back the next day and he picked Sarah and Adam too. My husband had heard about Catholic Social Services. We searched several agencies and we finally um, came in contact with um, Catholic Social Services and found out about their open adoption and um, decided he was glam. He was. Um, more open to it than I was at first. Um, I had a, my older brother is um, two years older than me, he was adopted, um, and it was a private adoption in the 70s. So um, I had been through, you know, growing up with him and seeing the struggles that he had um, and not knowing he was, where he came from, his mom and, and things like that. So it took me a little bit longer to come around to the idea. Um, and open adoption was a new concept compared to private adoption. So um, we went through the classes and, and did that, and we were still um, in waiting. And just much like Marta said, um, it was just agonizing. <laughs> um, and we got impatient, and we um, decided we were gonna, we were kind of against in vitro fertilization from the get-go, just from a spiritual standpoint. But I think we were just desperate. <laughs> and um, we went to um, sign up for that after we'd been through the um, adoption part, the open adoption classes. And um, when we did that, you had to take a pregnancy test before they would um, go, go forward. And I was pregnant. And um, so we halted that <laughs> and um, 
then I had a miscarriage on December 7th of 2006. And then um, 20 days later, um, we got a call from Catholic Social Services that there was a baby in Garden City and um, that she had chosen us. So we drove out there and met him, helped him, talked with the mom. Um, we're pretty much good to go with everything. And um, when it came time to sign the paper, she changed her mind. And so we left pretty much in shambles. <laughs> At that point, we pretty much hit rock bottom. Um, so we just kept praying. <laughs> and um, on August 24th of 2007, Amy called and um, told us about Jaden Preston and um, told us that it was a girl. Um, and we set up an appointment that next Tuesday, I think it was, to come out to Dodge and uh, meet them. And so um, we came out that day and, and met them. And um, Preston had a lot of questions for us. <laughs> And Jay didn't say hardly anything. <laughs> and um, I think we both were pretty nervous. I mean, they, you know, we didn't know each other. They'd seen our book, our profile book, and but we knew nothing about them really. And um, so we went through that, and I think after that we both felt a lot better about everything. And um, I think you walked out first. Amy walked you to the door first, <laughs> and um, I think we both just had a sigh of relief, and we decided, you know, this was a good fit, a good match for us, so we would um, proceed, and she was about, yeah, seven months pregnant uh, when we met her at that time, and um, so I didn't go to any doctor's appointments or anything with her, but we had a lot of contact. Um, she was 17, and so she was still in school, and we emailed a lot, and um, we came out a couple times um, between the time we met and the time Mia was born, and uh, just, you know, had dinner with them and got to know each other and their families and find out as much as we could, you know, and let them, you know, see us, what, this is us, you know, this is how we are. And um, so she was, um, her due date was October 2nd, and uh, she went on by that. <laughs> I was due October 2nd, and I always just have to say this because it's kind of funny. I was due October 2nd, and that never happened, so um, I think it was October 3rd. The principal calls me into the office, and he says, Jade, when was your due date? And I said, yesterday. And he said, um, would you be okay with just staying home until after you have the baby? Because we have some male teachers here that are kind of nervous about what will happen. <laughs> <laughs> I was blown away. <laughs> but sure, yeah, I'll stay after school. <laughs> so I got to stay home for three or four extra days. And I had all my homework done ahead of time already because I knew I was going to be out of school. So it really wasn't a big deal. Um, so October 8th was the uh, point, uh, schedule I was supposed to be induced. And we all went to dinner that night and we ate at Central Station here in Dodge. And if anyone's ever been to Central Station, the chairs there are wooden and uncomfortable. And I took my dad with me and that was the first time that dad had met Adam and Sarah. And we were on our way home and he was gonna drop me back off at my mom's and he said, you know, are you feeling okay? And I said, well, Dad, my back's hurt. Do we need to turn around? You know, and I said, no, I, said, I think it's just from the chairs. You know, they're uncomfortable, and um, my back's been hurting for months anyway. So I dropped me off at my mom's house, and I could not sleep that night at all. And it was about 2.45, and I said, woke my mom up. I said, Mom, I think it's time to go. She jumped out of bed and flipped on the lights. Where's your bag? You know, I felt fine. I, I didn't know what was going on. Just the first time I'd been in labor and I said well I'll go get my bag and it was raining and we live seven miles out in the country so the roads are really muddy 
And uh, she took me to Fowler into town and um, dropped me off with Preston. And Preston was going to bring me to Dodge. Um, and it was raining, and I, I felt fine. You know. And poor Sarah, we get there. And we get out, and I'm carrying my bag, and I go to open the door, and I'm like, it's locked. You know, I am yelling at her. <laughs> <laughs> She was freaking out, and I was just pacing the waiting room there, just waiting for them to get there. And I knew the doors were locked because it was in the middle of the night. And, um, so I was worried about them coming, and because I knew she was in labor. And I was like, you know, when she gets here, <laughs> those doors need to be open so she can come in. And um, so they got there, and the doors were still locked, and I was like, people, come on, <laughs> just let the girl in. And it was kind of rainy and nasty weather. And, um, so here she comes. I am a complete mess. Here she comes, cool, cool as a cucumber. Um, walks right in, and just, you know, as cool as she can be. Sits down, does her check-in paperwork, um, gets her room. <laughs> and, um, she got settled about, I don't know what time it was then, five, maybe, in the morning. And um, so then we, you know, we're in the room with her, and uh, my mother-in-law was there. That, that's a whole other story. And <laughs> so she gave me a big hug, you know, and got in my room, and <laughs> there were her and Adam were in there, Preston was in there, um, and then Trisha came in, <laughs> Sarah's mother-in-law, and I love that woman to this day, I still love her, but the contractions started getting really bad, and um, she got in my face and she grabbed my arm and she goes, breathe, change, breathe me, and I'm going, woman, this is the first time I've met you. <laughs> So they left, and it was just Preston and I in there. And um, we had told my doctor, you know, from the time we had decided to adopt, um, we want her directly out of the room. We don't want to see her. We don't want to hold her. Just take her out. And um, she made sure all of the nurses knew. And um, we had come out, and I closed my eyes, and I heard her cry. And I said, get her out, get out of the room. You know, I was screaming at him. And now I feel bad about that. But um, anyway, so they took her directly out of the room. And, and so um, they, the birthing center was really good. They, she had her room. They gave us our own room. And we were like opposite ends from each other, hallway. I mean, we could see her room, but we were, she was here and we were there. And um, so it wasn't much longer. Um, I went back at that point, like much like Marcia, Marcia. I went back to my to our room and I just lost it. I just started bawling, and it was the whole <clears throat> seeing what somebody was doing for you and um, the sacrifice she was making for us and what she was having, you know, my pain for her, what she was having to go through, um, and uh, so. Um, by 10, 20, 28, um, you know, was born, I prayed and prayed for her to have an easy, easy and fast delivery because I did not want for her to have to, you know, go through a terrible delivery and then have to do this too. And, um, and she did. She had a, a good delivery and pretty fast. And um, the, they had decided together that they um, wanted Mia taken away right away and come to us. And so as soon as she was born, the doctor came out and she was holding her like this. And I think I was just standing there in awe, just in shock. And the nurses were like yelling at us. 
you need to get in the nursery, you need to get in the nursery. And like shuffling us in there. And so they got us in there and um, from that time on, Mia was with us. Um, we went to the nursery with her. Um, all I could think of was, I've got to start talking to her. You know, she, I've got to, she's got to hear my voice. And um, so I just got to start talking to her. And, uh, they got her cleaned up and did all the stuff they had to do. And then we gave her her first bottle. And Preston and I just kind of sat there and cried. And once I could walk again, um, my family came in and out of my room. And um, I got up and took a shower and stuff. And Preston left. I had no idea where he went until um, later. Then we came out to go to our room. and. Um, I think Preston came out at that time and broke their little promise they had to each other or whatever agreement. Um, because they had agreed that they weren't going to hold her. I don't, I don't know when. I can't remember when. Either. Okay, until after they signed the papers and they were not going to hold her. Well, he came out and he wanted to hold her. And so um, he was holding her. And then Jake came out of the room and saw that. And um, she was like, well, <laughs> if he's going to hold her, I'm going to hold her. <laughs> I was getting my stuff, and I was going to my postpartum room. Is that what it's called? Yeah. And which was just diagonal across. And Sarah and Adam's room was straight across the hallway. And I opened my door, and I looked, and Preston was holding me. And like Sarah said, well, if he's going to hold her, when we agreed not to, by golly, I'm going to hold her, too. So I went and put my bags and stuff in my room. Well, I guess I wasn't really carrying my bags, someone else was, but um, I was gonna go to their room and hold her, and Sarah was in the hallway on the phone. And she saw me, and she was just bawling. And um, she hung up on whoever she was talking to, she hung up, <laughs> and, and she ran over and she hugged me, and she said, she's perfect, and you know, she's just bawling. And um, so I got to hold Mia, and I started getting sick. So I had to go back to my room. I slept for a little bit. Um, we just, all, their family was there. Our family was there. It was just like Grand Central Station. <laughs> um, and so we took a lot of pictures at that time, and I think you got sick. <laughs> and um, you ended up going back to your room and sat down for a little bit, and, uh, but the whole time, um, they were in and out of our room, their family would come in and hold her, our family would come in and hold her, um, and I don't know, it, I, all I can say is, it was such a God thing, um, we did not feel threatened, we did not, I, I don't know, it, it just, it just worked, I don't, I don't know how it worked, but it worked, <laughs> um, Mia stayed with them all night. My family left. Preston's family left. Um, and Preston and I stayed in our room, our room that night. And we didn't really even talk about it. We just read magazines and slept and watched TV. And, you know, I'm thinking from the time that we had made a decision to give her up for adoption, you know, there was never, I never second guessed it. I made the decision this is what I'm going to do. I've met Adam and Sarah, I'm not going to change my mind. Um, kind of preparing myself, I think. Preston didn't do that. Um, the next day, Preston started, I don't know how to, yeah, yeah. he uh, kind of started, I guess, changing his mind maybe a little bit. Um, which made me really mad because this whole idea was his to begin with. Um, so we got Amy, and Sarah and Adam came in our room. Amy came in, talked to Preston. We all talked a little bit more, and then I think Preston went okay with it. Talked my butt off. Yeah. <laughs> in that room. Yeah. It was Columbus Day, the day she was born. So the um, courthouse is closed, and usually they like them to wait um, two days. Is that right, Phoebe? 
So um, they went and did that, and she, of course she checked out, I think, at that time. And, um, and then they came back, and then that was the first time, this is the strongest girl in the world. Um, that's the first time I saw her cry and really break down. And um, so they held her for a while, and um, then they, they went home. Preston and I went to the courthouse and signed the papers at 137 and came back and said that, and went home. And I was out of school for a week. Um, went back to school, started basketball practice, saw Mia. Saw us at Yeah. Um, And like Sarah said, just for me, just seeing Mia, seeing how happy they are, seeing how happy and healthy Mia is, um, made everything 110 times better. Had I not been able to do all that, I think this whole process would have been a lot harder. Catholic Social Services helped me an incredible amount, especially Amy. I couldn't have ever done it without Amy. Um, even today, like, if I'm really upset about something, I know I can always go to Amy. It doesn't even have to be about me sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, so I went to college, and her mom, I want to say too, her mom was a rock star <laughs> that day Mia was born. She was the rock that held it all together that day. <laughs> That's why I have so much respect for her family, too. <laughs> And I'm also going to say, um, it is hard for me, it was hard for me to give Mia away. But <laughs> um, it's almost just as hard. She was my mom and dad's grandchild, first grandchild. And I have five brothers and a little sister. You know, it was their niece. And it didn't hurt just me. It hurt everybody. And that's almost just as hard knowing that I hurt them as it is for me giving her away. Um, that's all I wanted to say. Don't cry. <laughs> we had to stay for another night, and then um, we took Mia home, and um, we uh, we kind of left it open to them about how much contact they wanted to have. Um, we weren't going to really push it on them or say no, you can't, or you know, whatever. We just left it up to them because they had given so much to us, you know, how could we turn around and say no? <laughs> um, so ours has been very open. Um, we have a, a great relationship. Um, she knows that she's welcome at our house anytime, and she's very respectful to our family. Um, they always call um, and ask when, if they want to come see her. Um, they don't just show up, you know, um, and, um, so she went back to school, like, soon, and, um, she started basketball practice, like, within a month, probably, yeah, five weeks later, <laughs> and so, um, she got her first basketball game, 
or a basketball game, I don't, I don't know how it was. And um, they wanted us to come, or we wanted to go, I can't remember. And um, we decided that it'd probably be better for them to come and see Mia before, because she hadn't seen Mia yet. Probably be better for her to come and see her at our home than seeing her for the first time at the basketball game. So that was their first visit to our home um, to see her. And then um, we saw them for Christmas that year. Um, I don't know. We just whenever she felt that she needed to see her, she would call and ask, and um, they would come. I just I just call them like if I really start feeling like I miss Mia, I call so I can visit, and they've never told me no. Um, and I go visit and. I'm fine for a while until I start, you know, and I miss her every day. It's not that, you know, some days oh, I don't miss her at all. I miss her every day. But when I feel like I need to see her again, then I can just go see her. And then I'll be fine for a while, and it's mainly just holidays and birthdays. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's gotten less like then. <coughs> it's gotten less and less um, as time's gone on. And, you know, they told us that when we went through our um, classes. And like Marsha, you know, you kind of, I felt like, you know, kind of we were losing something, <laughs> you know. You're kind of sad about it because, I mean, we enjoyed seeing her. But, you know, you have to realize that they're moving on. I mean, she was 17 when this happened. And, you know, she's gone to college. Um, she's got a career now. You know, she's moving on. And so um, they just get busy with their lives. And it's not that they've forgotten about the child or your family. They just, you know, they're just like you. They're busy um, and it just gets less and less, you know. They don't have all that time to focus just on that child. You know, Jade would tell me when she would come visit, and then she would drive up to our house, she would just have a sigh of relief because she knew that Mia had a good home, a good family, and I think that's what it is. Um, she can tell you more about that but for the birth mothers. is, And she was kind of the same way. Um, she didn't really play with Mia a lot. She just she wanted to see her. She wanted to see that she was okay. Um, she would hold her when she was an infant, and we even actually had her babysit a couple times when she was in Pratt. Um, but I think it's just that, um, being able to come and that solidification for them that they made the right decision once they see you and your family. And um, that's what helps them. And I, you know, when I first started the open adoption um, program, I was like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> How does this work, <laughs> you know? Um, but the program, totally opened my eyes to that and made me understand and um, I can't imagine after now now not having contact with her because after Mia was born um, I would ask her mom I was like is is Jade okay you know how's Jade doing you know I was so worried about her and her well-being and I, I wanted to make sure that she was okay and you know even after sh she was born and we were home you know, I always was just worried about Jade. You know, I hope Jade's okay. How's Jade doing? Um, I can't imagine not knowing who she who she is, and um, you know, not being able to see how she is how she's doing, and just not know not knowing. You know, she may be okay. She may not. You know, and we want to. I mean, we pray for for her to be blessed. You know since that day, um, because as much as she blessed us, I mean, there's no greater gift than she could have gave us than what she did. She graduated that year, um, and then she, she went to college, and she was thinking about, you know, where she was going to go to college, and she actually came, we live in Pratt, she actually came to Pratt, and went to college, so she lived in our same town, um, and our friends thought, you know, oh my gosh, you're crazy. But I don't think you can understand the situation until you've been in the situation. Um, and we actually encouraged her to come um, to Pratt. And um, 
I went on a college visit with her and her mom. And um, so she went to college out there. We probably saw her less when she was in Pratt <laughs> than we did, um, you know, when she was still in Fowler. Just because, I mean, she had she was moving on. She was, you know, she did college. She was busy. Um, but it wasn't like we, we were in the same town and we ran into her all the time. Um, so um, she did that, and then um, about when he was two, we had we had contact with the birth father also, and we probably saw them about the same as we did her in the beginning, and then we saw him a little bit less. Um, and then when um, whenever um, well, 14 months later after we adopted Mia. I was pregnant with Havily, who was sitting on my lap. And like them, we were very nervous to tell both of them because we'd gone through this whole adoption thing and, you know, it's like, okay, what do we tell them now, <laughs> you know? So we were kind of, we weren't sure what they would think about it, but both of them were very supportive and very excited for us. They were probably the most excited. I went to college and I was on my way to choir class and stopped check my mail and I got some Mia mail and I opened it up and Mia had a t-shirt on it was a picture of Mia with a shirt on that said I'm going to be a big sister and I just started bawling I was so excited and I called Sarah and I you know congratulations it's awesome um, I was ecstatic and I called my mom called my dad you know um, they were all happy I think didn't my mom call you yeah um, <clears throat> Anyway, then little Miss Hadley came, and I went and saw her in the hospital. And so um, they both came when um, when Hadley was born to the hospital and saw us, and that meant a lot to us. Um, and just like um, them, she treats um, our kids the same. Um, they, if they bring gifts for Mia, they bring gifts for Hadley. Um, and she'll tell you that um, she thinks of Hadley just as she thinks of Mia. Um, so that, you know, from our, from our standpoint, that means a million to us that she um, thinks that. And um, so anyways, that was the last time that we saw uh, Preston was the day Hadley was born. And then um, he passed away when, in December when he was two. So um, we don't have him around anymore. And, but we still have contact with his family. Um, and we still see them. And um, we have um, contact, we also have contact with her parents, grandparents, his grandparents. Um, there's more involved than just the birth mother. My family and I go see Mia and Hadley. Mia calls me Jade. She calls my mom Karen. You know, she calls my sister Brittany. She calls us by our names. Um, and that's what we want to. Preston and his family was kind of a different story. Um, Preston referred to himself as Daddy. His mom called herself Granny. And to me, that is extremely disrespectful to them. Um, that's how my family and I see it. That's not how they saw it. They handled that. Um, I don't know if they still do. I think we just, um, it was kind of hard to figure out how to handle that. <coughs> but we just didn't respond to that. Um, when, when we were would speak to them in front of Mia, we would call them by their names, and we didn't address them as whatever they were referring to themselves as. Um, we just said, Michelle, Preston, uh, he has his granny, which she's just kind of gr a granny. She's, she Every just day. is, she's yeah. granny. So we do say granny about her, because she's just a granny. Um, but, um, yeah, we just, I don't know, they, in their minds, they may still 
in their world, they may still do that, you know, I don't know, but when they're around us, we don't really tolerate it. Okay, I got married. I am divorced, but I did get married. Um, I was too young. <laughs> but the entire Wyatt family was in my wedding, which meant a lot to me. Um, both of the girls, me and Anne Hadley, were flower girls. Um, and I just thought that was so cool of them to be willing, you know, to be a part of my wedding and to let the girls be in my wedding. So that meant a lot. It meant a lot to us that she thought enough of our family to do that. So doing it for both of us. And she always says, you know, she thinks she thinks us, and <laughs> we're like, no, 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 no. We thank you. And she says, you're the best in the world. We're like, no, 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 <laughs> you are. <laughs> But um, we have um, a really, really open relationship. Um, I think we do. I mean, she knows we're here for her. Um, and um, we, you know, have Facebook, and we put pictures on there. I'll tag her sometimes if there's something I think she'll really want to see. Um, or she'll tag herself. Um, so, you know, we share, she sees our pictures that way. Um, She's, you know, I mean, she, our life's an open book to her. She can see what our family, what we do. Your, your friends and your family will think you're crazy, um, especially your friends, because they don't understand it. You know, everybody has the stigma of adoption, what it's like. And, um, you know, now we have open adoption. And we have, you know, the birth mother is part of our lives. And people are just like, are you kidding me? You know? I mean, they just cannot believe it that she's not wanting to come to our house and steal Mia. You know, that's what everybody thinks is going to happen. And I'm just like, no, you don't understand. You know, it, that's not how it is. And um, Mia is about four and a half is when she really started um, starting to understand things and started asking questions. And I think the first time that she asked me something, I think my heart just dropped because I thought, I mean, I was thinking, I have to, I'm going to have to explain this to her. And I thought I was going to be in tears. And I just told her something. And she was just like, okay. She was okay with it. And she was ran off and did whatever. Um, and then, you know, you go on, and one day she'll have another question. And you tell her, and she's like, okay. And she runs off and plays, and she's okay with it. You know, so they just kind of learn as they go. And, um, you know, I, I know, you know, we'll, we have her ahead of us. Um, you know, she's going to grow and wonder and have questions. And, you know, Jay's going to get married probably one day and maybe have more children. And so, um, and those are things we're going to have to address. But um, it's not, you know, it's not a big, like, one day a big, like, bombshell drops. And everything in the world stops, and your child wants to know about what happened. I mean, maybe it will happen. Maybe that's what's going to happen later. <laughs> everything that we've taught them up till now is they're going to be like, I didn't get it. Um, <laughs> Catholic social services. I just, I have the highest respect and everything for them. They do an awesome, awesome job. I and I'm so thankful for them that they were here. Um, for us when we went through the, the program to help us open our eyes to open adoption. And Amy, I still call Amy today for questions, and she's there for me. Um, and I know she's been a great support system for Jade, um, you know, five years later. <coughs> and um, so they, they do an awesome job at what, what they do. Um, and they're there for you, you know, when you have a question or are just, you know, at your wit's end. Um, so, but the most important thing I think I can say, I always like to say is, um, you know, have respect for the birth mother and her family because she's going through so much. Um, you know, when she has that child, she gives it up and and their families, you know. Um, even I even say today, I mean, Mia's fifth birthday was October 8th, 
and even up till this year, there's so much emotion that I have around her birthday. Because as wonderful as that day was that Mia was born, there was so much sadness that day because she was giving up something. And she did something incredible for us. And I still struggle with that, that um, you know, she had to give up something so we could be so happy. So it's a, it's a tough balance to figure out. Um, you know, it's, it's hard because it's Mia's birthday and it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful day. But um, there's still sadness that goes along with that for, for her. So, and I always, I always call her and, you know, talk to her around that time and just see how she's doing and, because I know it's hard for her. So, just, just have respect for them, I think, is the important, important thing. Because they're real people. They're just like you are. Um, they have feelings.